Alright, so just as I did on the first one, I'm going to take this page by page. Uh, you can look and see all the kind of hints that I have here. You can pause this at any time to obviously see this. Uh, right here I want to point out that I've n I'm naming all the things by number of terms and degree, which is what num really number two and three are about. Uh, and then down at the bottom, the only thing I have written down here is just that we're plugging X and Y into X and Y, and then I've labeled the X and Y as well. Page two, uh, you can kind of see some things here that you can write down. Um, number one, how to find the axis of symmetry, uh, and that it's always x equals the number, and that the x value of the vertex is the axis of symmetry. They are one and the same. Um, that we're just plugging some points into x. We're going uphill and down for increasing and decreasing. Same thing here. On this last problem, um, you can see the things that I wrote down here. Uh, you can copy those in, obviously, by just pausing the tape and copying those down. I'm going to go to the next page. Uh, up at the top here, you can see the vertex form, what it is, uh, and then it's kind of hard to read accurately, so I labeled my three points here a second just so you can see them. We'll get back to that shortly. Um, changing from vertex to standard form and vice versa, I wrote down the two forms that you need to write them as. I'll talk about those as we go, and then for 12 through 17, you have the factors that you need to do there. Next page. Uh, I started writing some on the top there, P forgive me for that. Uh, all of these are a little bit different in terms of how you solve them for 18 through 23. Uh, so I will be going over those individually down at the bottom. Again, the quadratic formula, which I will write on the board for you, uh, is ri written right there for you to use. Remember that this always has to equal zero for that to work. So this one's good to go. we got to do something here. Last page, um, I circled the very top. Uh, the, the i is the square root of negative 1, and the i squared is negative 1. And then what I am doing here on 28 is to distribute, combine like terms, and then FOIL on these two. I am not FOILing here. This is really a negative 1 that is getting distributed first. We'll come back to that later. Um, on to page 1 here. Um, the vertex for this should be really easy because I can just identify that point as negative 3, 1. Okay? Uh, my axis of symmetry is always, always, always what that is. And if you need to, you can draw a line here. Sorry, I'm not very good at drawing lines apparently, uh, but you can see that that goes through that point where it reflects in each of these points. So 4, negative 1 right here is P, so they want to know what P prime is, which is negative 2, negative 1 right there. They should always have the same Y value. They're saying they want this to be Q, so Q prime, very simply, is negative 5, negative 7. Okay, now from there, what I can do is go on to the next problem, 5, 1, B where again you have to know these terms here what they are I am not going to just give those to you I am telling you you need to memorize those down at the bottom what do we gotta do here first well we're gonna have to distribute which in this term this one will foil in this it's really taking this negative 2x and distributing it all the way through so I have 6x squared plus 8x minus 10x cubed because I got 1 2 3 minus Four, or excuse me, plus, because a negative times a negative is positive, 14x squared minus 18x. Okay. Um, now combine like terms and put it in standard form. In standard form, it says it right here, is writing it from highest exponent, so negative 10x cubed would be first to lowest. I took that one out. I'm going to combine these two to give me 20x squared. I've got an 8x and a negative 18x give me negative 10x and that's actually it my leading coefficient here is the number that is in front and the name of this would be well if it's to the third degree it is cubic according to what we wrote up above and trinomial because it's three terms moving along to this one this was an accident I did not mean to have two trinomials here because that's what's going to happen but this is going to be 6x squared um, plus 12x minus 2x minus 4. Write it in standard form. The leading coefficient is 6 because it's the first term. And this is a quadratic trinomial. Make sure you know what all of these are up here. I'm not going to give you two trinomials. I can assure you of that. Um, and I likely won't give you four or five, but you should know them anyway. Uh, on to the bottom here. 
you can plug into x, y, y, x into x and y into y, so I got negative 4 equals negative 3 squared plus c. Again, I have to do what's inside here first, so I've got negative 4 equals negative 9 plus c, and just do the opposite to solve for it. I get c to be 5, but again, it says complete the equation. I'm going to put a box around that because it's significant, because the answer is negative x squared plus 5. You're plugging it in for that one here. Now in this problem I'm going to plug it in right here in the very end. Plug x into x and y into y and there's multiple x's here. Be careful. 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 6. Okay. And let me move this up just a little bit here, sorry. And I've got, let's see, 6 equals a times 4 minus 8 plus 6. I can combine these two like terms here and I'm going to kind of switch these two around just so it looks like something we're used to. And then this is just a two-step equation. You should know how to do this. A is 2, and I go back in and just plug it in. And there it is. There's page 1, plus some helpful hints. I will see you on page 2.